Hey ho everyone, this is Cindy Park, director and scriptwriter of the film The Paper House. If you're watching this video, then I am positive that you might also have watched our team's short film uploaded on our website. But some of you might be wondering, what is the message behind this film? What were the producers thinking? Why is the character like that? Blah blah blah. That is why I have created a total of 4 CCR videos that can answer as many questions as possible and it begins with the very first theme on this episode, Conventions and Social Issues. If you have watched the film carefully, you might notice what the story is. Clues are already given, character in a conflict with his family, a dream, black clothes, news. That's right, our film is about a past one cannot easily forget. Otherwise called a trauma, the paper house represents groups of people whose lives have changed due to negative incidents and up to this day still suffer from them. Steps we did for this goal? Before we organized our final idea for the script, we considered how our youth would live after he or she experiences a great loss, especially losing a family he or she loves. That was because our main character Luke was characterized to suffer from the accident in his past which led to his father's death. Because our films generalize a drama, we had to describe the character's life as realistic as possible, while at the same time emphasizing some of the elements. That is why our team researched and observed different individuals and families who had traumatic losses of their loved ones. As a scriptwriter, I had to research twice as hard as other teammates, not only gathering the information, but also selecting which of them is appropriate to include in the plot. That is when I found the book Surviving the Grief of a Traumatic Loss. It stated that people after the loss begin to believe that the world is unfair and their assumptions towards themselves and others will shatter into negative feelings. In fact, the common emotions expressed by those with traumas were guilt, shame and anger, unable to control them easily. Even the psychologist Benjamin Hardy stated that trauma was like staring at the monster Medusa. If not overcome, one will be stuck in his emotion, like becoming a stone. It was his words from which I was inspired to create the setting of the film. After this process, we went on to the next stage, which was... There were a series of general conventions referred to that were present in other media products. The first was that many of the characters who have traumas have gloomy lives. Like a typical person after a sad experience, the character's behavior at the start of the film is filled with conflicts with others, in this case, his mother, and has little smile on his face, seeing the world more negatively than before. You can get an idea the moment you hear the character's dialogue towards his mother at the beginning. I don't care, mom. You're never here. You act like you care, but you really don't. I wish you would have died instead of dad. Another convention we discovered was that traumatic people tend to be stuck in the nightmares they experience whether they are conscious or not. Through items the character owns with additional unusual materials, we utilize symbolic codes in the film to further emphasize the dilemma people with trauma undergo. One of the major signs is the rising action of the film itself, stuck in a house of a dream similar to what Dr. Hardy suggested. Why would he choose a house, a home that is supposed to be comfortable? According to renowned psychotherapist John Frame, founder of Symbolism.org website, it could be a place for relaxation, but if the meaning goes further, it could also represent memories, a life of his residence. Throughout most parts of the film, the main character constantly mentions his deceased father, finds memories about him like a family picture and all the good times he had when he was young, including medals and trophies, while he is locked inside a house. But not all items he finds do not trigger his happiness. Slowly, he follows traces of flowers that end up bringing back the accident he wanted to forget in a form of framed newspaper of, or his father's last letter. Their impact for appearances and shocks he expresses emphasize the main character's inability to let go of the past and move forward. Or should I say, get out of the house. Symbolism is also used to create our own way of telling that people often overcome traumas by facing them directly and choosing to be free of them. This is represented by the key the character finds in the ways he breaks in frustration and desperation to go out of the house. Ah! 
For this scene, we were inspired by Dr. David Hawkins' famous quotes on how to heal an emotional trauma, that one must bravely face and accept his feeling. Being stuck in the past may only enhance fear and depression and may stick around you whether you're aware or not. That is why, choosing to move forward from comfort zones may help the person commit to values and purposes of life and become flexible in emotion. Eventually, he or she will let go of the trauma. Similarly, the key itself immediately appears when the character's desire to get out reaches its climax after facing all the traces of memories, then uses it to open the log house and regain its freedom, no longer stuck and out of his own emotional prison. His positive change is further reflected by the full shot of his tribute to his father outside his house, accompanied by his non digestive voiceover to his mother via apology. Lastly, the format for our film itself follows some of the traditional features of a short film. Due to the fact that the duration was limited to 5 minutes with a specific amount of budget, we attempted to keep several elements simple, the key factor of making a short film. To save time of a filming day, we set the setting to be in one location and a single character occurring only around the boy named Luke in his house. Although there are deep messages of facing fears, the main storyline is also easy to understand. The character is stuck in the house, finds clues, realizes what his conflict means, and becomes free in the end. All of the sequences of the storyline are depicted by the character's actions and symbolic materials, without any written code or dialogue. This makes the film more abstract than feature films, strengthening the creativity of the producers. And of course, our short film can be watched easily online other than being screened in the cinema. Just like you finding some short films on YouTube, the paper house we uploaded through our Media Studies channel, as well as presenting it in our official website after the screening finishes. Even though some people say conventions ruin the uniqueness in media products, we cannot deny that they are helpful in setting the important basis to set our main themes and storylines. Besides, if we did not set the standard conventions for short films, who knows? Our short film might have become disorganized and confusing for the audience to understand. Staying firm to some of the standards may be as significant as applying new colors to the film. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next episode.